In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, now and for all ages, of all ages, Amen. The chapter from the Holy Gospel tells us about important behavior, important thinking, important deeds, we should watch it. Tells us about the conditions to be a disciple and follower of the Lord. To be disciple of the Lord and follower of the Lord, we have to disregard all what contradict with his love. Anything contradict with the love of God, we should put it aside. It shouldn't come first. It can come through our love to God. Also, avoiding any relationship deviate us from our fellowship to the Lord, then carrying the cross, and finally counting the cost. Counting the cost is very important. And those who know finance, they know how important it is to count the cost, to have bookkeeping, to keep track, see what the income, what the spending, always check those things. And the Lord tells us and gave us example about building a tower and going to war. If someone wants to build a tower, he has to count the cost and see if he can do it, if he has the resources or not. List he starts and cannot finish, and the people will mock him. Also, to get involved in a war, you have to check what do you have, how, how strong your army is, and how good equipped the army to face the war. If you don't have those resources don't start. You will be defeated and you will be in big trouble. And this is applicable to our spiritual life. The tower is the Lord himself. As the book of Proverbs tells us, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. So we want to live in this tower want to be protected in this tower, we have to count the cost. We cannot have the Lord and have the world. We cannot worship God and worship money. You cannot have the protection of this fortress, of this powerful tower, while we are depending on our own power and our own resources and depend, depending on others. Also in war, we have a fierce war. If you remember, we talked once about the spiritual war. We have a very fierce war and the enemy is very powerful and resourceful. But what we have is much more than what is against us. So, we are in a fight, we are on war, all our life on earth. The evil one wants to get us and to defeat us, so we have to count the cost. Can we face him or not? If we have the Lord on our side, victory is guaranteed. But if we depend on our intelligence, 
our ability we will be defeated badly the cost of following the lord it is costly to follow the lord we have to leave everything and follow the lord what is that all the believers will be monks or something no this is not what the lord meant the Lord means to leave it from our hearts, not to worship it, not to take our attention, just to use it and not be used by it. To follow the Lord, we have to leave everything, even the love to ourselves. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for me will find it. So, if we want to live with the Lord, we have to leave everything and to devote our life and our heart to the Lord. We cannot have two masters. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. No matter what we take care of our earthly life, one day it will end. Look at those who were before us and those who will come after us. There is no other way. So, we have to count the profit and the loss. There are different concepts about the profit and the loss. For us, it is completely different. As St. Paul tells us, I considered everything as rubbish comparing to the love of Christ. For St. Paul, imagine everything for him like trash, waste, when he compares it with the love of the Lord. And the Lord gives us the example of the wise steward who counted the cost. Yes, he deceived and made some defraud, but to secure his future on earth. So the Lord is taking this example. Look at the unjust steward, how he tried to secure his future, and look for yourself. Do you think about securing your eternal future or this is something of no importance spiritual financial management management spiritual financial management money itself is not evil it's not bad it's a gift from god but when it turns to be a God, this is a problem. There are so many rich people who are rich also in good works. So, we have to know how to manage our resources. You know, we live in a very consuming society. Consuming is the right word? Yeah. Buy this, buy that, don't worry. Don't pay now. Pay later. Oh, take this loan. Don't worry. Big loan. There is no such thing called free money. You know? Those people who are in business, they are not stupid. They are doing that for profit. So don't be deceived. Don't spend the more one, what, what you have. Don't be dragged by those plastic money. 
Just spend, 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 don't worry. And then you pay interest in 19% or something. Uh -huh. Yeah. They drag you. It's easy. Just put the card and get whatever you want. And if you want it today, we'll get it to you today, right? Amazon tells you that, right? You want it today? We'll get it to you today. Just put your order. We should be careful with that. And when we spend, we should put God first. We should put God first. Not our desires first. Do we put the tithes first, then count the cost, or we count it backward? Think about it. There are so many to this point. So we should spend within our resources, and before spending, we should put God first. Then everything else comes. But our problem is nothing is enough for us. We need more and more and more. More and more and more. But the Lord tells us in the Holy Bible, if we had food and clothing with this, we should be content, satisfied. Oh, we have much, much more than food. I don't think any one of us here has in his house less than two refrigerators and maybe deep freezer. Hmm? And how many closets? Oh, ask the ladies. They will tell you how many closets they want. Nothing is enough. We need more and more. And we don't put in consideration our eternal future. Do we secure it? Do we make some saving for eternity? The story is told about a great Coptic, famous man, Ibrahim al Guhari. Those who know the church history, they know what I'm talking about. Ibrahim al Guhari lived in the second half on the 18th century. During the reign of Mamalik, you know Egypt is under conquest since 550 BC, till now, and God knows till when. Anyhow, this time, it was the reign of Mamalik, and they were crazy people. Ibrahim al Guhari got very high rank, the equivalent of prime minister, and he was very rich. And in the same time, rich in good works. After he died, he had a daughter, her name, Demiana. The governor called Demiana and told her, I know your father was very rich. I'm sure he left a lot of money and he had, with the language of today, uh, a lot of saving in many banks and many accounts. I want you to bring to me the names of those banks, the number of his accounts, and everything, everything your dad left, I will take. I know he is rich and he left a lot. So don't try to play games with me. She told him, she told him okay, Your Majesty, give me just two days. And I, I'm, I keep, I'm, I'm keeping the books of my dad, and I, I know the banks, I know the number of the accounts, I know how much he had, and everything. Just give me two days, and I will bring to you everything, all what you need. After two days, she came with a big crowd of poor people, of handicapped people, big crowd and brought them in front of the governor. And she told them, 
Your Majesty, here are the banks of my father. All my wealth of my father in the bellies of those people and in their shacks. Be my guest. Go get what you want. He secured his future. Counting the cost. About what we, co we care most, the now and the here, or about eternity. The cost of following the Lord is leaving everything, putting him first. Then after that, everything comes. To secure one life, we lose the others, the other. To secure our earthly life, and forget about eternal life, we lose it. To secure our eternal life, we should lose our earthly life. We should be wise in counting the cost and remember the example of the unjust steward. He was smart, secured his earthly future. How about us? Do we secure our eternal future? Do we transfer some money to eternity that when the time comes to leave, we'll find a place there? As there is physical or money was, managing management and counting the cost, also there is a spiritual counting the cost. We care about having saving. How about saving for eternity? Securing a place in the eternal habitation. Spending within our limits. Don't stretch yourself. If you don't have the resources, you don't need it. اللي معهوش ايه ما يلزموش ما دام ما معكش يبقى ما يلزمكش if you don't have what it gets it so you don't need it and God knows what you need but the problem nothing is enough for us we want it more and more and more not to be drowned in debts there is no free money if you have, spend. If you don't have, you don't have to. Secure our eternity is very important. Counting the cost. Each one of us should review that and count the cost. And glory be to God forever. Amen. ونياته خن أو مسمين نياته وبنت باي إهو